In 22 seasons, Kevin Harvick has amassed a substantial number of wins and fans. His 1 million Twitter supporters topped the Cup Series perennial most popular driver Chase Elliott and his 926,000 followers, Merry Offseason. This past year, fans of the number 4 car witnessed a resurgence in performance when the 2014 Cup champion ended his 65-race winless streak in emphatic fashion with back-to-back victories first at Michigan, followed a week later at Richmond. While those wins propelled him into the playoffs, his postseason stay didn't last long, and he was eliminated after the first round. His loyal followers will likely remember those two wins years from now, but the larger NASCAR audience will remember the Stuart Haas racing driver for something considerably more important, his voice. In 2021, Harvick and Denny Hamlin were the first two drivers to openly express concern about safety issues with the next-gen car, long before it ever debuted. Unfortunately, those concerns came to fruition this year in the form of concussions. The future first ballot Hall of Famer showed his veteran leadership throughout the season by consistently speaking out on the overall issues with the new car. His most fiery comments, appropriately enough, came after his car shockingly caught on fire at Darlington in the first playoff race race car like we've seen so many times we haven't fixed anything it's kind of like the safety stuff we just let it keep going and keep going and the car started burning um and as it burned you know the flame started coming through the dash and i ran a couple laps and then you know as the flame got bigger and then it started burning stuff up and i think right there you see all the all the brake fluid that was probably coming out of the brakes it burned the brake line but the, the fire was coming through the dash so That's scary what a disaster man no no reason. We didn't touch the wall, we didn't touch the car, and, and here we are in the pits with a burned up car and can't finish the race during the playoffs because of crappy ass parts. So to... He didn't stop there and continued on Twitter. Harvick unapologetically displayed this season that he's a leader well beyond his on-track performance. He's shown that in the past with his business acumen, including overseeing his successful talent management marketing agency. Among his clients, son Keelan, who has started to pursue a racing career of his own in Europe. Dad has been alongside for the ride with his 10-year-old son this offseason, suggesting the whole point of racing internationally is to expose his son to the best of the best, teach him how to lose, which he has, and more importantly, how to learn from those defeats and get better. Harvick knows what it takes for Keelan to achieve the highest levels of racing success in the youth ranks because long before he achieved his professional achievements as a top cup driver, he pursued a similar path years earlier. The 47-year-old recently visited with former NFL star and Fox NFL commentator Greg Olson on his Youth Incorporated podcast and detailed his journey through the youth circuit. During their almost hour-long conversation, he revealed how knowledge is power and finding your way around comes with experience, which he has in plentiful supply. Harvick said, unfortunately, some people just don't know where to turn, and he's seen folks repeatedly commit the same costly mistakes that can ultimately leave a family in shambles. Like I said earlier, I mean, you know how to do it. You know the path to get there now, and you know the people to do it. You know the right race teams to call. You know the right go-kart teams to call, and you just you go straight to it. And, and I tell p- other parents that all the time. You have to be able to do what you can do within your means to not destroy your family, because I've seen this happen time and time again where people spend everything that they have thinking that they're doing the right thing and they have they don't do it properly and then they destroy their whole life because of the fact that you know they they think that they're going to their next kid is going to be Dale Earnhardt Jr and that's just that's just not the case for everybody and I, and you know I think as as you look at it I always tell people try to be successful at the division that you can afford and when you can do that try to figure out how to go to the next division because you can race it Every local short track across the country has a, you know, Friday, Saturday night races. If you're good there, there's some sort of regional touring division that you can run in, whether it's on dirt or asphalt all over the country. So there is um, local, regional, national, international. It's, it's, it's literally, um, you know, whatever you choose, there's just a, there's a price tag that, that comes with it all. And, and, you know, in the end, you can still get there by having success. It's just a matter of being around the right people and being in the right places. And, you know, if you can't afford to go do them all, go, go, go do the ones you can afford to do right. And that's more important than just showing up at every one of them. 
Harvick acknowledging how challenging it can be to successfully navigate the waters of racing is eye-opening. Interestingly, he also talked about how those waters are often shark-infested and sent a serious warning message to those considering the trip. You know, I think doing your homework as far as who you can trust, who the right people are to, to be around, there, there's so many crooks in whether it's baseball, basketball, football, no doubt. coaches, racing. It's all the same. Coaches. It's all the same. Yeah. And, and you, you have to find the right people and finding people that you can trust and not going down that path. And that's, that's really what I've tried to coach them on. Let's not go down the path where we sign a contract that we shouldn't sign, or we get a deal that we shouldn't have, or we get a coach that we shouldn't have. And we waste, you know, like two years, three years, whatever the case is. And you get, you just got to do your homework and being able to put yourself in a position to where you're around people that you can trust that are going to do right for your kid uh, to be able to teach them the skills that they need to have. And that's, that's really the hardest part for anybody to navigate is uh, that is outside the racing world is to find somebody that you can trust. That's not just going to take all your money because that's, that's really what, what a lot of these people do. They'll, they'll sweet talk you into, you know, thinking that they know more than they know. And the next thing you know, you're just another number um, making, making their mortgage and, and your, your kid hasn't learned anything and you're just having a bad experience. And the next thing you know, you're just done with racing because you know, nothing, nothing went right and you spent all your money. Harvick warning parents about youth racing and getting taken advantage of by people that don't care about others is strikingly similar to what the driver had to say about the sanctioning body earlier this year. Your attitude at this point, obviously, I mean, you've been frustrated anyway, but now it affects your, your race. Yeah, well, they don't care. Kevin Harvick cares a lot for potential racing parents, for his fellow drivers, for the sport and its overall health. And that's why years from now, fans will surely remember his legacy on the track, as well as what he did to make racing better, from the grassroots level all the way up to the very top of NASCAR.